Determining whether a function is linear, this is lesson 6.2c. Every equation in the form y is equal to mx plus b is a linear equation. Linear equations represent linear functions. Equations that cannot be written in this form, slope-intercept form, are not linear equations and therefore are not linear functions. A square tile has a side length of x inches. The equation y is equal to x squared gives the area of the tile in square inches. Determine whether the relationship between x and y is linear, and if so, is it proportional? So the area of a square is side times side, isn't it? So we're going to say the a for area is y. That's how we have y is equal to x squared, OK? So we have a tile, a square tile, with a side length of x, and we have y is equal to x squared. We know if we multiply this side by this side, and it's a square, so all sides are the same, aren't they, that we'll have the area of that square. We're going to let y equal the area. We choose several values for the input x and substitute these values for x in the equation to find the output y. So we can use 1, 2, 3, 4, we can choose any number. I could have used 10, 20, 30, 40 if I wanted to. It might be hard to graph because we're going to have to do that. So I chose 1, 2, 3, 4, and for x squared, we have 1 squared. For 2, we have 2 squared, we have 3 squared, and 4 squared. And that means the y is going to equal 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16. Now we have our x, y values. We have our ordered pairs. We have our x and y. And now we graph these ordered pairs. I have all the ordered pairs plotted on my coordinate plane, and we identify the shape of the graph as a curve. See how it's curving? It's not a line. The definition of a line is straight going on infinitely. The curve through the points represents the solutions through the function. Next thing we do is describe the relationship between the x and y values. The graph is not a line, so the relationship is nonlinear. Only linear relationships can be proportional, so the relationship is nonproportional. It's nonlinear, nonproportional. We can also use the numbers in the table to decide whether or not the relationship between x and y is linear. We just use the slope formula. We take two ordered pairs, and this will be our second, this will be our first, and we do the slope formula. And we do the second y first minus the first y, so we have 4 minus 1. Then we do the second x minus the first x, so we have 1. That gives us a slope of 3 over 1, or 3. If we choose this as our second one and this is our first one, we end up with a slope of 5, or 5 over 1. Just from these two, we can see the rate of change as the slope is not constant. We have a 3 and then we have a 5. That's not constant. They should be all 3s or all 5s. This means the relationship is nonlinear. The equation y is equal to x squared cannot be written in slope-intercept form. This is slope-intercept form. That cannot be written in slope-intercept form. Since the right side of the equation has x squared, it's not in slope-intercept form. Every y value will be the square of the x value, creating a curved graph. OK, you're going to really have to pay attention here because this is going to get a little tricky. Is this a linear equation? Well, now look, our y-intercept b is over here, and here's our x value. Now, this is a positive 5. This is a negative x. The variable or integer takes the sign to its left, so that negative sign belongs to the x. We have negative x. We have a positive 5 and a negative x. Now, do you remember that each lone variable actually has 1 as its coefficient? So negative x is equal to negative 1x. Well, now look. We have a slope and we have our x. That was in 7th grade math video 6.1b, and I'm going to have that linked in the description if you missed that. 
This means we can rearrange this equation so it's a negative x plus 5. We just move this plus 5 over here. So we have y is equal to negative 1x plus 5. And that is in slope-intercept form, so this equation is linear. Just remember that the sign to the left of the variable or integer goes with that variable or integer. So this makes it a negative x. It makes it a negative 1x. Then we're just adding 5 to it. We've got our equation. Now look at this one. Is this a linear equation? We have y is equal to 8 plus x. Well, do you remember from grade school, the commutative property of addition states that we can add in any order? So we're adding 8 and x. That means we could switch it around and do x plus 8. Now we have our x and we have our y-intercept b. With a coefficient of 1, this equation can be rearranged to slope-intercept form. This means this equation is linear. Okay, we're finished with part c. We're going to move on to the last part, 6.2d, which is after the lesson in the going further section, creating nonlinear functions. If any part of this lesson confused you, go back and watch 6.2a, 6.2b, or that 7th grade math video, 6.1b, and hopefully that will help you. Have a great day, and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.